All right. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us on our monthly educational webinar series. Hope everybody, everybody's having a great summer. I feel like summer's flying right by. Uh, today's topic is for everybody. Uh, we're going to do a My Vortical Portal overview uh, for end users. If you're an admin, uh, you also have an end user level to your portal as well. So this, uh, this, this webinar is for everybody. Uh, we have a lot of people that signed up for this one. So we're going to give folks just a couple more minutes to join. Uh, while we wait, we're going to go over a few housekeeping items. We'll start off with uh, introductions. I'm Kyle. I'm a project manager here at Vodacall. I onboard brand new customers. I see a lot of familiar names and a lot of new names. So thank you, everybody, for joining. And with us is Dan, who is our sales engineer. Hey, Dan. Hello. Um, well, yeah, that's what I do. And I also see a lot of familiar names here. So uh, for those of you who I know, hello. For all the new faces out there, hello as well. And uh, thanks for joining us today. As we go through this, um, you know, please uh, there's note that there's a questions tab just off to the right. Um, and, uh, you know, any questions that you put in there will not be seen by anybody except for us. Uh, we'll be sure to try to either answer them right now or get back to you afterwards. If we are going to get back to you, though, we'll give you a quick shout out during this and just let you know that we are. And then uh, just to the left of that, you should see a polls tab. And so while we wait for folks to show up here, I would love if uh, you guys would open the polls tab. And um, there's two polls that we could start to fill in now. Uh, one, what topics would you like to see a webinar on, uh, you know, moving forward? And then just below that, how about we try the, uh, what do you use the portal for now? Okay, um, and we would love to see what you guys fill in for that. There is another one below that one, no cheating, don't get it done earlier, but it's after we're done. Like, what do you think you would use the portal for after you see use the webinar? Uh, so this is pretty useful information for us, especially when deciding what we're gonna do. Um, Kyle and I have been working on this webinar series for a while now. Um, and, uh, you know, we're coming up with next topics, although we have the next uh, month or two sorted out, but, you know, always good to hear what you guys think and what you guys are looking for. Absolutely. So Kyle, I'll hand it back to you. All right. And, uh, all of our previous webinars are on our website too. At the end, we'll throw a slide with links where you can see all of our previous webinars. Um, I think a few more folks have just joined. So just to recap, there's a questions tab on the bottom right corner. As we go through, feel free to fire away any questions. If you see anything that piques your interest and you want to have a, a more in-depth conversation, feel free to send an email to support at vodacall.com and we'll schedule time to have a chat with you. I think we're good to get started. Um, so what are we going to go over today? We're going to go over the uh, portal. We'll take a look at some of the features. We'll show you some tips and tricks. And then, uh, of course, we'll throw up a slide at the end to show you some links to our resources and training materials. So you might ask, why use the My Vodacall portal? Well, we like to say access is everything. Uh, so your phone system isn't just a, a, a phone on your desk. There's a portal that can add value as well. You might be wondering, well, what else do I have access to in the portal? So there's answer rules and scheduling. You can use timeframes to route calls on your extension. There's the Vodacall Go web phone, call recording, call reporting, visual voicemail, SMS and MMS text messaging, button, uh, button programming for your desk phone, faxing, and much more. Uh, Dan, anything you want to add to this one? No, I know that's quite a bit of information there, guys. So if you guys want to let it all kind of kind of settle in. Um, for any of you guys who are admins, I know you've seen this uh, a lot of this stuff before. For those who are end users, we're very happy that you guys are here. We love the idea that you guys might start using the portal on a daily basis. We believe there's a lot of useful information in there. And this is just kind of the tip of the iceberg or the highlights of some of the things that you have access to. Absolutely. We'll, we'll be showing you all these, all these items in the portal in just a moment here. So how do we access the portal? We're going to hop over to myvortical.com and then there will be the login page. So I'm going to turn off my camera, share my screen, and we're going to hop right in the portal and get started. Uh, I'm going to do the same, folks. But again, anybody has any questions while we wait, please fill in your questions now or just ask them as we go through this and we'll get right back to you. As Kyle said, for anybody who um, has a more in-depth question, you know, you can either email support at vodacall.com um, or you can ask the question here and we'll get back to you on it. Um, 
and uh, and we'll be sure to do that. Looks like Kyle's got the portal open, so I'm going to hand it over to him. And uh, again, you won't see my face anymore, but I'm still here. <laughs> All right, so we're at myvoticall.com, and here's our login page. Uh, first tip and trick here, there's a few different ways to sign in. When you work with your project manager, they can uh, they would send you a welcome email that provides your username, and that email would also have a link for you to create your password, uh, to create a password, or you can also sign in with single sign-on options. If you have a Google, Apple, or Microsoft Office 365, you can log in with your single sign-on options. If it doesn't work, uh, contact either your Microsoft, Apple, or Google administrator, and they'll enable single sign-on for you. So I'm going to log into the portal using my Office 365 single sign-on. I'll click on my Microsoft account. And since I'm obviously a Vodacall employee, I have several accounts I log into. So when you click on that, you would just see your own extension there. So I'm going to log in as our um, user here. Click continue. And then we're going to land on our landing page. I'm going to have Dan go through this page real quick for us. Okay. Um, and thanks, Kyle. I appreciate that. So the landing page or your home page, this is where you start off in the portal. Um, and again, this view may look a little bit different than some of you folks who are admins. If you are admins and you want to get to this page, you just click on your name in the upper right hand corner and it will actually take you there. Um, so when you arrive as an admin, you arrive on the management page. If you're a supervisor, you arrive on the supervisor page. But we're, we're focused more on the end user page today. The idea here is that we want to get end users involved in the portal as well, because again, we believe there's a lot of useful information that you get here. But this first page, you can consider this first page to be a lot kind of like your phone in a lot of ways. Uh, you see your voicemail messages here, albeit voice, visual voicemail messages. Uh, you also see your recent call history here. Um, and then you can see what your default answering rules are. So where you're forwarding your calls to, which phones you have set up to ring. And Kyle's going to review a lot of these features with you, so don't worry about it as we go through it. Uh, you also have access, access to your active phones. So you can see, you know, right, Kyle has the mobile phone logged in right now and the Poly Edge phone lined in. Uh, logged in, excuse me. Now up at the top across there, home is the page that we're on now. And then we'll review your messages tab. Okay. Uh, we'll also take a look at your faxing. Uh, that's another option that everybody has access to. Contacts, you are answering rules, time frames, which are what guide answering rules, uh, right? So those are going to be, you know, days and times of the week or specific days. Um, and then you've got your phones tab and then you've got your call history tab, which is where you can go pull up all the calls that you've ever made on the Vodacall One solution. So um, again, think about this as just general overview, health check almost. Um, you know, if you any of you are logging in right now and you're not seeing anything in your new voicemail messages, um, I would ask that you just go ahead and either click on new voicemail messages or the messages tab. Uh, the reason being is, is that if you're using voicemail to email um, and you have voicemail to email and you have it set to move your messages either to saved or to trash, then you wouldn't see anything there. OK, so that would be why that that field would be blank. Um, but again, this is very, very easy. Anywhere you see a phone number that's highlighted in blue, uh, you could click on that phone number. And Kyle, you just want to show that. Um, and that'll actually ask you what phone you want to call that person from. So whether it's your web phone or your poly phone, um, or you could even enter another phone number in to have the system call you at, and then it would call out from your number or from your desk. So with all that being said, I think uh, I'll hand it off to Kyle um, and he can start to walk you through some of these other tabs. Um, we'll go from there. All right. Thanks, Dan. Uh, so the Welcome. next thing we're going to take a look at is our messages tab. Um, and here's our visual voicemail. Here's where you can read the transcription of the voicemail. You can play and listen to it. You can forward it, download it, save it, delete it. So you can manage your voicemail right from the portal as well. Um, you can see your new saved and deleted ones as well. If we hop over here to settings, here's your personal voicemail settings. If you uncheck enable voicemail, then you no longer have a voicemail. <laughs> so you want to make sure that's checked. Um, these options here are for when you access your voicemail box, whether it's through your phone, web phone, or, or Vodacall Go mobile app. These are just things you can either have it announce the co incoming caller ID, the time the voicemail was announced, etc. So you can turn these on or off. There's an operator forward option where you can 
in your voicemail, you can say, you know, please leave a message or to return to the main menu, uh, please press zero or for, you know, a different coworker, press zero and you can put in the extension number of an auto attendant or if I want calls to go to Dan, I can put Dan's extension in there. Let's not do that, Kyle. <laughs> We can also copy extensions to other voicemail. So if somebody were to leave me a voicemail, I can have Dan get that copy. <laughs> um, I can add other users as well um, and so forth. So whenever somebody leaves me a voicemail, that voicemail will be copied to these uh, folks as well. And you just simply hit the X to delete folks too. Uh, voicemail transcription will be enabled. You can turn that on or off. That is for your voicemail to email. And also, as you saw here in the portal, there's a couple additional options here too. So if you're gonna have voicemails uh, left in your voicemail box, it's probably a good idea to have this option enabled. This will send you an email when your uh, mailbox is getting full so you can clear the voicemails right out. This uh, option here is uh, a pretty neat uh, tip and trick too. Uh, a lot of sales folks might like this. Our COO loves this uh, option here. So this will send an email after a missed call. So if somebody calls you, um, you didn't answer, you're gonna get an email notification of that missed call. And if somebody keeps calling you, you're gonna constantly get those uh, emails. So it might be a good indication to call that person back. <laughs> Down here is where you can manage your voicemail greetings. You can add multiple greetings and select which greeting you want folks to hear. You can add or edit existing greetings by clicking the manage button here. This is going to open up a separate little window and I can either edit an existing one or add a new greeting. When I click add, I have three options. I can do record. I can put in, for example, my direct work number or my cell phone number. Click the call button and it'll call me. Then all I have to do is follow the prompts to set up my voicemail greeting. You can, of course, upload one if you already have one downloaded on your computer. Or you can do the text-to-speech, which is my favorite. You can type in whatever you want your voicemail to say, select a voice, you know, play the voice, make sure it's a voice you like, and click Save, and that's all there is to it. Down here under Notifications, this is how you're going to receive your voicemail to your email. So you have a few different email types. You can have it sent with a hyperlink, so you can click the link to listen to it, or have it uh, directly attached to the voicemail uh, to the email as a WAV file. And you have a few options um, after you receive that voicemail to your email. So you can have the email sent to your uh, the voicemail sent to your email. You can have it uh, as a new voicemail too on your phone. You can have it moved to save, which just moves the voicemail to the saved uh, folder in your phone. Um, it won't flash like you have a new voicemail. Then of course you can do move to trash, which means you're only going to get that voicemail to your email. It will not be stored in your voicemail box. If you do either leave as new, move to save, that's where it's a good idea to have the send email when mailbox is full option checked. Over here, we have a chat and SMS tab. You can chat internally with coworkers. Uh, you can chat through the Vorticall Go web phone or the Vorticall Go mobile app. And if you have texting enabled, you can send and receive text messages through the mobile app or our Vorticall Go web phone as well. So here you'll see we have uh, some conversations. So I can look at an existing conversation and continue that conversation and text this person back. All I have to do is type in uh, a message in here, say hello. I can do emojis too. <laughs> and click enter to send that text message. You can also send uh, media as well. So you can text pictures. Uh, if I would take a look at this one here, you'll see that a picture came through of a phone. So you can text media as well. To start a new text or chat, you will click new conversation, put in either the extension number of the person you want to chat to internally or the phone number of somebody you want to send a text to. Click start and then type in your message and send it along. So texting okay. is extremely easy. So, hey, we had a question come in here from our friend Mark. Hello, Mark. Good to see you here. Um, and Mark says that his chat and SMS tab just says chat. Um, and that would be probably because we do not have SMS enabled on any phone numbers um, on your user um, at your level. So, Mark, we can reach out to you after this is done and we can talk to you about SMS um, and what it requires to get that turned on. Just so everybody knows, um, it is uh, turning on SMS is something that... Um, it's not hard. 
uh, but there is a process to it. Um, and there is uh, there's a there's a group called the DCA out there. Um, basically, because of the number of spam texts that people are getting on their phones, carriers have all gotten involved um, in making it so that people have to register um, in order to send SMS messages. So it's not just a button that we can click for you when all of a sudden you have SMS. Uh, we do need you guys to go through a process with us. We've tried to simplify that as much as humanly possible, um, but it is regulations out there. Um, I'm sure all of you work in a lot of businesses that are highly regulated. I see quite a few of you out there that I know that's true. Um, so it is something that we'd want to take a look at together. Uh, it's pretty easy to do, but again, uh, it's not just a checkbox for us. Yep. And if uh, if something you want to talk about more, uh, send an email to support at vodacall.com and we'll uh, have a chat about the SMS setup process. Let's take a look at our fax tab. Um, so if you don't see a phone number in your fax tab today, faxing is included with the end users at no additional cost. So we can provide you a free fax number so you can fax at the end user level. There's two different faxings. Uh, we do have the, the end user fax, which is free. But if you need a fax number that everybody has to send from, there is an additional cost for that one. But as an end user, we can provide uh, free fax numbers. Oh, I think we have a question that came in. Uh, I, have a I have asked for a free list. I'm not sure what that means. Well, so yeah, Tiffany, we can reach out to you with what costs are. Um, when this is over, uh, we'll reach out to you and kind of go through that. It really does. Um, it, they're very minimal, um, depending on what sort of thing that you're going to use um, and what you're using SMS for. Um, so we, we just have to go through that together. Perfect. Um, All right. So faxing. So if you have a fax number here, uh, you should see uh, receive faxes in your inbox. Uh, you'll be able to download your faxes, view your faxes, uh, delete faxes as well. You can also view your sent faxes and same thing you'll be able to download them view them and delete them uh, to send a fax is extremely simple i'm going to click this blue send fax button over here i'm going to attach a document i'm going to put in the uh, fax number i'm going to send it to I can add a cover letter, fill in the applicable fields, and click send, and that fax is on the way just like that. So sending fax, faxes is extremely easy. Inbound faxes would be stored in your portal, and they would also send inbound faxes to your email within a PDF attachment of that fax. Let's hop over here to our contacts tab. Uh, by default, you'll have your whole uh, internal company directory here in your contacts. You can add contacts to your directory. So if you're in your personal portal and you click add contact, whatever contact you add will only be visible by your own devices. They would only appear in the, the directory of your desk phone, your mobile app, and your uh, Vodacall Go web phone. You would fill in the applicable fields and click save. And if you add somebody that has a phone number, once again, you can click on the blue to call. You would select the device you want to call from. It would call that device. Once you answer your device, it would then place that outbound call. You can also import and export your uh, directory as well. We're going to hop over here to answering rules, and we're going to show you how answering rules and time frames play together. So if you're in your answering rules, by default, you would only have the default uh, answering rule visible. So if you don't have any time frames applied, you're only going to see your default uh, rule here. If you hover over your default, you have a manage button over here to the right. We'll click on that. And that's where you're going to find some call forwarding options. You can also do a, a simultaneous ring and also a find me, follow me. So if I want to put in my cell phone number here, I could set a delayed timer. So calls would ring my extension. If I don't answer after 10 seconds, it's then also going to start ringing my cell phone. So that's a pretty neat feature as well. But of course, if you're using the mobile app, you might not need that um, feature enabled. So we're going to take a look at time frames. So you're going to see I have a couple time frames already applied here. So I'm going to hop over to my time frames tab. By default, you're going to see all of your company's time frames there. They're grayed out, so you can't click on them. The blue ones are the ones that you would have added, and these are the ones that you can manage and add to your answering rules. Um, so I have my after hours voicemail and my do not disturb. But if I click on my after hours one, I did days of the week and times, and I set the time frame for when I'm out of the office after hours. So the white part means that's when I'm in the office. 
So, and I'm going to show you what that means here in just a moment. I also created a do not disturb uh, button here too, which is always. So when that's on, I can set the rule so it always goes to my voicemail. I'm going to quickly create a vacation time frame. We have a previous webinar on time frames. So if you want to learn more about time frames, hop over to our uh, previous webinars and take a peek at the uh, time frames webinar. So let's say I'm going to go on vacation next week. I'm going to be out of the office from the 4th and out to the 8th. I'm going to see I'm going to drag this bar to the uh, to midnight. So I'm going to make this time frame start uh, on the 4th at 12 a.m. I'm going to have it ring to the 8th right at midnight. I'm going to click Save. Now I'm going to hop back over here to our answering rules and apply that rule. So I'm now going to click Add Rule. Select my vacation time frame and say during this time, haha, Dan's getting all my calls. Or, <laughs> or I can How about have your voicemail, Cal. <laughs> or I can have it go to my voicemail. So if I wanted to have it go to uh, my voicemail, I put in my extension number and click my voicemail option and click save. So you'll see I have my after hours voicemail time frame. I have my vacation time frame and my do not disturb. I'm going to actually take my vacation one and slide it right up above my default time frame because I want these ones above my default. So what it's going to do when somebody calls my extension or my direct number, it's going to look at these answering rules. It's going to look, does Kyle have anything in his vacation time frame? If no, it's going to flip over to my after hours. If um. If it's after hours, you would then see that this was active and would follow this rule going to the voicemail of the uh, my extension. But where it's not after hours, my default rule is set to ring into my extension. Uh, and then if I wanted to turn on do not disturb, I can simply drag this above default or uh, to turn it on and therefore calls it also go straight to voicemail. So that is how timeframes and answering rules play together. Um, it can get a little confusing perhaps at times. So if you have any questions, by all means, reach out to sportvotocall.com. We'll make sure you're all set and get that taken care of. So let's hop over here to our phones tab. Uh, you're going to see our active devices. We'll see that the Polycom phone is online. We also have our mobile app that's uh, logged in. If you click the Go Mobile button over here to the right, this is going to bring you to some QR codes. So if you haven't downloaded the mobile app yet, you can go to your extension, click your phones tab, click the go mobile, get your cell phone out there, scan it, whether you have Apple or Google uh, Android, this will provide your username. You can also use the single sign on options on the mobile app as well. Um, another cool little neat trick in here. That's also one of my favorites is the button configuration. So if you have a physical desk phone, you have buttons on the left and the right side of the screen that you can manage. So we're going to hop over there and show you how you can manage your buttons. And you'll see that this phone has uh, four programmable buttons. So it has two on each side. By default, the first button will always be reserved for your own extension. It's your own line appearance. So you will not be able to change the first button. So technically, this phone has three programmable buttons that we can manage. You'll see over here, I have some user BLFs. So there's a few different options. User BLF would be if um, I want to add Dan as a button on my phone. If Dan's on a call, it'll uh, his light will be red. If he's available, his light is green. And I can also push his button to give him a call. And I can also use that button to transfer calls to Dan as well. You can also do speed dials. So you can click speed dial, put in a phone number, give it a custom name. And then all you have to do is click save. Um, if you want the changes to be made immediately to your phone, click the little up arrow next to save, click save and resync, and that'll update the buttons on your phone right away. So that is the uh, button temp uh, button configuration. Uh, admins can also apply templates or create templates. So if there's a template created, you can come right in here, select a template, and push that out to all the phones as well. So that's uh, more or less an admin feature, but there are templates that can be built and added and assigned to your phones. We'll hop over here to the call history tab and you'll see all your call history. You'll see the direction of the call. So you'll see whether it's an outbound call, a missed call or an inbound call. You'll see who the call came from, the date, the time, the duration. Um, over to the right, you can add uh, numbers to the contact. So if it's uh, you know somebody you want to add to your contacts and you click this button here, either create a new contact or add it to an existing contact. And if you have call recording enabled, this is where you're going to find your call recordings. You can download the recording or actually just play and listen to it right from the portal right here. 
You can also search call history. So call history is forever. So if I click on the filters, I can search by uh, a date range. You can only search by 30 day increments, meaning if I was looking for a call from August of 2018, I would search between August 1st and August, August 30th. So that's what I mean by you can only search by 30 day increment, uh, 30 day window. You can also search for uh, callers numbers, people who called you. You can search by numbers that you may have dialed and you can also filter by uh, the call direction, whether it was an inbound, outbound or missed calls. And then you can export that as well. So once you get your filter set, you can also export the uh, history right into a spreadsheet. Up here in the upper right corner, we have our apps drop down, and here's where we have some more additional tools. We have our attendant console, our Vortical Go web phone, our Vortical Go video, vision analytics boards, which might be more towards uh, call centers and admins and our user phone list. Um, I'm going to open up the Vodacall Go web phone uh, and give you a quick little tour of that. We do have another webinar on work from home options that spotlights the Vodacall Go mobile app and Vodacall Go web phone. So if you have any uh, cu curious about that, hop right over there and watch those webinars. So once I open up the web phone, I'm going to have everything I saw on my home page and also access to everything I can do on my desk phone. Here's all of our internal contacts and any contacts that you would add to your directory. You have your call history here. You can click on a record and call that person back. You have access to your visual voicemail. Your chat and SMS are immediately right in here as well. Access to call park spots if we have call parks uh, program for you. And here's our answering rules. Remember, we're taking a look at our answering rules earlier with our time frames. Um, so you can enable these from here as well. So if I'm using my web phone and I want to go on Do Not Disturb, I'm going to drag that right above default. You're going to see that little blue bubble um, became made that my active rule. So now calls are on do not disturb. And I can switch that right back around by sliding default right above. And now I'll receive my calls. You can also select what voicemail greeting folks here right from here. As well, you have some additional settings. So this tool is a great work from home tool. Uh, you can select what microphone you want to use. You can select your audio output. So if you're using a headset, callers will hear you through your headset. And you can also select your uh, ringer output. So if you're not going to wear your headset all day, you can set your ringer output to go through the speakers of the computer, but yet have your conversations go through your headset. Um, what we got here. So we have a couple questions. Oh, looks like Danny already answered Felix. Yeah, I'm on, I'm on my way. You can, you can, you can keep going. You're kicking okay. butt. <laughs> all right. Sounds good. Um, and if you want to make a phone call using the web phone, just going to hit the orange bubble down here, hit the dial pad, and dial your internal extension or dial the phone number and the call is on the way. Another neat little tool here for uh, Google Chrome is you have this button right up here in the upper right corner of the web phone. If you click on that, that'll actually install the web phone right to your browser so you don't have to log into the portal to open it. You would just be able to click on that icon right up here in the um, search bar. Um, tab and then open up the web phone right from the portal, uh, right from the uh, browser. Another uh, neat little tool that I like is the user phone list. So this will show your internal uh, company. It'll show all the extension numbers, the department sites. If you ever, if you're a multi-site uh, organization, extension numbers, direct phone numbers, again, just a quick little um, quick look at, uh, you know, internal users here. So that is our portal overview. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and turn on my camera again. All right. So do we have any additional questions? I have one. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So um, has everybody filled in their polls yet? That would be, that would be the question <laughs> that I want to, that I want to ask. I apologize. I'll let you guys ask some questions in a minute, but um, it is really important to us if we can, um, Felix, I just updated the answer to that question for you, by the way. <clears throat> but it would be great if you guys could uh, just fill out, especially the bottom two, like what you first of all, the top one is what you'd like to see a webinar on um, as we go through this. But uh, what did you use the portal for now or today uh, prior? And then what will you use the portal for after seeing this webinar? Uh, just so that we can kind of see some of the topics that are interesting to folks. 
um, the idea here is, is that we continue this series. Um, there'll be more, uh, there'll be more relevant material to the folks who like to like to be here and ask these questions. Um, it looks like we have a couple people that we're going to reach out to after this um, with Mark and Tiffany and Felix uh, being some of those folks for anybody else uh, who hasn't um, asked the question yet. And please buy, um, please uh, copy or, or excuse me, uh, copy that, right? Um, please uh, send in uh, any questions right now. We'd be happy to try to answer them or you can email support at votocall.com. Don't forget that Votocall is a 24-7, 365 support-based organization and that every feature is included in the one, Votocall One solution. Um, so if there's something that you need within the solution, um, that, it, that is included. Um, so you can uh, you can just reach out to us and, um, and and we'll be we'll go ahead and either get that turned on for you or show you how to access it. Uh, for instance, Felix's question was it just about faxing and how he could send a fax, but Felix does not have a fax number associated with his user. Um, so when we do uh, enable faxes for you, we have to give you a fax number, um, and th that is something again that is included. We'll get you a fax number, and then we turn it on for you. Then you'll be able to send and receive faxes from your user. Until then, you will not be able to do that. So um, I think it's just important to keep those kind of things in mind. But we are here for you. We're here to answer your questions. We're here to help you out in any way we can. So um, I haven't seen any new questions um, come in yet, but uh, I do see the resources there. And please go through those. Um, one of the things that I will tell you is, is that if you do have faxing enabled, there is a video on our uh, Vodacall One training page on how to send and receive faxes. So you can go watch that and see what that's all about. Yep. We have this uh, training link here. This is a link to our training videos. Uh, it's very thorough. It'll show you, uh, we have uh, training videos on our, particular, our our phones that'll show you how to do everything you need to do on your phones. It's broken down by chapters. So you can click on a chapter within that video and go right to that section. These are how you su submit tickets to support. And this is a link to our uh, webinars, uh, our webinar library. Looks like we had one additional question come in. Yeah, I'm just asking if we're transferring calls with the web phone. With a, there's a question on how do we transfer calls. So is it with the web phone, the mobile, or your handset? So, um, you know, and then once we understand that, um, we can go a little bit further. And it, it might be that we should probably give you a call, Bernadette. All right. Uh, Paul, uh, when you did the button configuration, did you click the up arrow next to save and do save and resync? I'll, I'll give you a call after two just to make sure that all went well for you. Yeah. I mean, and Kyle, if you just want to jump back into the portal, if you have it up there. Um, so, yeah. Paul, there, there's save, but if you don't hit the little arrow next to it, so save will just save the configuration. Um, sometimes, and, and uh, okay, so Bernadette, yeah, we'll reach out and make sure that we, we walk you through how to transfer calls with a handset. Um, and then, Paul, with regards to... Um, so the reason that it's like that, just so you know, little little tips and tricks, right? Sometimes someone's on the phone and, and um, you know, you don't really want to just alter their buttons in the middle of them being on the phone. So we have a save and then we also have a save and make uh, save and make live. So um, you'll be able to do that that way. Uh, he's got it. It works. So, well, so. As with all trainings, Paul, if one person thought it, then maybe somebody else is thinking it too. So we'll go ahead and just uh, we'll show it anyway. I'm glad that I'm glad that that worked for you. Yep. So uh, right down here, you have the up arrow next to save and do save and resync. And that'll push any button changes to your phone immediately. Uh, so, Mark, it should not reboot your phone. Um, it should just change the buttons, but again, it's one of those things that I think we, we have there is just save so that you can save it, have somebody else look at it and then just resync it later. Um, I, I haven't heard of anybody who was, uh, had their phone reboot because of a button resync. As a matter of fact, Kyle changed the buttons on the phone that's right next to me because I have the phone he's demoing right now. Um, he changed them on me yesterday. So, and Bernadette, is, uh, she has the handset. So, talk about the phone. Um, I guess it just depends on the make of the phone. So, um, I can touch base with you, Bernadette, after and make sure you're all set on transferring calls with the phone. All right. I see a lot of you guys still hanging out here. Um, 
Uh, so I'm, I'm happy that you're here. Hopefully you're filling in the polls for us. See, we can't see them until after this is over. So it's kind of a bummer, but because um, otherwise I could, you know, beg and plead and, and really try to drive you guys to fill in those polls for us. We appreciate it. Send me a Vodacall shirt and I'll do it. <laughs> uh, All right. Well, I guess we'll see. call that a wrap then um yeah thank you everybody uh, if you need anything reach out to us at support at and i'll be following up with a couple of you here shortly have a great day uh actually before you hang up kyle uh cool. pat yes yeah. uh I, are all of our webinars are actually if you the link that's on the page right in front of you right there that's uh vodacall.com forward slash webinar you can will re-watch these webinars they they will go up after today, uh, this one will go up and you'll be able to go back and, and rewatch it. Um, for anything that's specific to trainings, you know, these are more, we want to show you all the features and things that are there. Um, they're not like the specifics on how the nitty gritty on how to get through something. Those are more in the one training page, um, but you can always access those as well. And if you ever see something that's not there, by all means, just ping us and, and we'll go ahead and just get a video created for you. I think now we can call it. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Have Thanks, a great everybody. day. Bye-bye.